Let's learn how to use R to construct a bar graph. I've already opened R Studio and I've created the script that I will use to construct a bar graph for the passenger class in the Titanic passenger data. The first part of the script is to read in the data and calculate descriptive statistics. I need to calculate these statistics in order to construct the bar graph. I had previously created a script for calculating descriptive statistics, so I simply copied that script to begin my new script. Another way I could have done this is to simply add on to my previous script. That's what I typically do for my own projects. I only start a new script when I'm preparing to conduct another analysis with different variables, or if my analysis is so complex that the script may get so long it will be difficult to follow. In that case, I'll break the analysis up into multiple parts that each correspond to a separate script. I've covered reading data into R and calculating descriptive statistics for a categorical variable in other videos, so I'm not going to go through that portion of the script again. Instead, let me show you how we can run that previous portion of the script all at one time. I'm going to highlight all those functions. Then I'm going to click on the Run button. R read in the data and calculated the statistics. Notice in the R console window that we can now see our frequency distribution table. Now let's study the function for creating a bar plot. Many R functions can accept multiple inputs. These are also called parameters or arguments. Often many of these inputs are optional. The bar plot function is a good example. It only requires one input, which is the proportions for the categories of our categorical variable. I saved these proportions into an object that I called class props. So class.props is the primary input into the bar plot function. We could stop there, but if we do, the bar plot will be missing some elements that are important in a graphical display. Let's look at the additional arguments that I used in my script. With the names.arg argument, we can provide descriptive names for each of the categories of our categorical variable. If you look at the names.arg line in this script, you'll see the letter C. We use C quite often in our functions, so let me explain what it does. The C stands for concatenate, which is another way of saying, put it all together. The names.arg argument expects a single list of values, so we can create a single list by concatenating are three names for the cabin classes, first, second, and third. If we don't concatenate, we will be feeding the argument three separate values instead of one list, and the bar plot function will give us an error message. Anytime an argument requires a list of values, you will need to use the C function to concatenate. The next argument is xlab. This sets the label of our horizontal axis. The horizontal axis is often called the x-axis, and the lab in this argument is short for label. I'm going to use cabin class as the label on the horizontal axis. In the data set, this was called p-class, but that's not as descriptive as cabin class. Similarly, the argument y-lab will be the label for the y, or vertical, axis. On a bar graph, we want to put proportion or percent on this axis, so I'm labeling this proportion because that's my input to the bar plot function. Next is the ylim argument. This will tell R the minimum and maximum values that I want for my vertical axis. In a moment, I'm going to change these, but for now, I have put the minimum as zero, and the maximum as 1. These are the minimum and maximum possible values for any proportion. Note again that I use the concatenate function 
because this is a list of two items. Finally, the argument main permits us to set a title for our graph. If you're going to import your graph into a word processing document, you may choose to create the title within that document, in which case you don't need to put a title on your graph. I'm going to go ahead and put the title on my graph. There are other arguments that we can use to spiff up the graph. For example, there's an argument for setting a color for your bars. If you want to see other possible arguments so that you can set your graph apart from others, remember that you can click on the Help tab in the Files and Plots pane. Type bar plot in the search window. And here you can see all the possible arguments, descriptions of what these do, and examples. Before I run the bar plot command, I'm going to resize my files and plots pane so that I'm sure it is large enough to give me a reasonably sized graph. If you forget to do this, not to worry. An advantage of a script is that you can rerun anything you want with one button. You can resize the pane and run the command again. Now that I have resized the pane, I'm going to run the function. Eureka! Here's the bar graph. Everything looks good except there's a lot of white space at the top of this graph. Do you recall that I set the limits of my proportion from 0 to 1? That's why there's so much white space. If we look back at the frequency distribution table, we'll see that the largest proportion is about 0.54. So let me reset the upper limit on the y-axis, then run this graph again. I'm going to set it to 0.6. Ah, that's better. I'm ready to export this graph as an image that I can then import into my word processor. I'll use this when I write my report about this analysis. If you want, you can resize the pane again before exporting to change the size of the image. You can, of course, resize further in your word processing document but I found that getting the size at least close to what you want while still in our studio prevents image distortion in your document. That's how you create a bar graph. Go experiment with some of the additional parameters. Spiff up your graph. Make it your own. Have fun! <laughs>